Hey guys, TJ Hernandez here, and I'm the founder of RosterCoach.com, a classroom-style video-based website that's designed to help you improve your daily fantasy sports game. To give you an idea of what RosterCoach has to offer, here's a preview of our first lesson in the latest course, How to Be Profitable Playing PGA DFS. If you enjoy what you see, please like and share the video, and don't forget to leave a comment below. and welcome to How to Play PGA Daily Fantasy. I am Davis Maddock. You can find me on Twitter at Davis Maddock. Today, we are going to learn how to play PGA Daily Fantasy. I'm going to take you guys through the very basics of what PGA Daily Fantasy is, how it's scored, and some of the peculiars in the scoring for Golf Daily Fantasy that do not exist in other sports. So just kind of give you a beginning introduction to how the sport is played for Daily Fantasy. If you've played some contests before, if you're familiar with the scoring, you can probably skip ahead to some of our next videos as this is really just the beginning for someone who has not played golf daily fantasy before. So maybe you played a bunch of NHL or NFL or whatever. And you want to get in on the Millionaire Maker or start grinding PGA cash games. This is a really good starting spot for you. Right now, I have the salaries for the 2017 Valspar Open pulled up on DraftKings.com. Uh, this is one of my favorite tournaments, the 3 Max on DraftKings. So just like all other sports on DraftKings, the remaining salary, your total salary is $50,000, as you'll see there on the screen. And what you do on DraftKings is you select six golfers underneath the salary cap, and you try and score the most amount of points. Uh, our average salary here is 8300 so if we just start clicking on these guys here, it populates us a roster. Obviously, you're going to want to put more thought into it than that, but it is very simple. Just like all the other sports, you're just trying to get the most amount of points. However, unlike most other sports for Daily Fantasy, they have a very interesting form of scoring. So if you've played golf before, you know that the idea is to shoot a low score and get birdies and eagles and other scoring categories. However, when you look at the per hole scoring here on the DraftKings scoring rules page, the first thing that you're going to notice is that a birdie is worth three points and a bogey is only worth minus 0.5 points. So if a golfer were to play a round at exactly even par, you would want them to make 9 birdies and 9 bogeys as opposed to 18 pars. And this might be a reference that is lost on some of you if you have not watched very much golf, but a golfer like Jim Furyk, who is doesn't necessarily hit it that long off the tee, he doesn't score a lot, and when we say score in golfing, we're typically referring to birdies, eagles, or eagles or better. Uh, whereas someone like Sean O'Hare or Brooks Kepka, someone who has a little bit more volatility to their game, they're more likely to get these birdies that are worth three points, even if those do include some minus 0.5 bogeys. For example, you, you need to get six bogeys to take away the points from one birdie. So especially at no-cut events, which we will talk about a little bit later, you really are just going to focus on guys who score birdies. And you'll see that this is reflected in DraftKings scoring, you'll see guys who score a lot, who uh, generally score more fantasy points per game, they're going to get a big boost in the salary. For example, when we're looking down here um, at guys like Byung-Hun Ann, who doesn't necessarily have a ton of top finishes like someone further down the list might, but he just scores a lot due to the nature of his game. The next thing we need to talk about is tournament finish scoring, which basically where you finish in the tournament is going to get you a lot of points. And we see a big jump here at 10th. So, and this is a scoring category on DraftKings. And we're going to talk more about tournament history and uh, and how that works uh, in some of these later videos. But this should be pretty self-explanatory. Unlike the scoring, that is uh, a little bit different. Uh, basically, the better you do in the tournament, the better you score, the better your DraftKings score is going to be. And some of that stuff can be indicated from past results. Certain guys, someone like Patrick Reed, generates a lot of top 10s because they tend to do well on Sundays, even when they're out of the hunt. Other guys, if they're not in the hunt, their game fades uh, a little bit. The next thing we need to discuss are the streaks and bonuses. And this comes back to our, our birdie bogey discussion from earlier. So you do get points if your golfer makes three birdies in a row. 
and that's going to generally come from guys who hit the ball really far. You know, they kind of they kind of just give themselves a lot of birdie chances. 